Welcome back to Moon Knight. With the scarf. Just making herself a fake passport. That's why you. Oh, look who it is! I don't know if anyone remembers her, but uh, she was on Orange Is the New Black. I'm sure she's been in other things, but you know. <laughs> stolen relics, and cheeky antiques. They've already been stolen. And return them to their rightful owners. Ah, cool. I might keep a few to pay the bills. Mm. <laughs> I miss him too, is all. Oh, you know, I'm sure they cut out a bunch of necessary steps in order to recreate this, but they did show an awful lot <laughs> of that process. I'm not familiar with the song, but it's pretty good so far. These Arthur's people. Yep. I want to know which god made the scarab because, um, good job, <laughs> you know? It's even that accurate. It's like, all right, start digging. I was hoping they would at least run into the problem of it's like, oh, it seems to be going into this mountain. Let's dig. But then you dig all the way through it and it's like, oh, it's behind the mountain. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to start off with an action scene. Oh, shit. Whoa, this music. All right, let's go. Oh, <laughs> it's like, you're just a kid. I'll smack the shit out of you. Oh. <laughs> I've always wanted someone to do that in an action movie. Thank you. Mark. Mark. I mean, yeah, I, w I wouldn't kill them, but... Oh. Ah, cool. I was hoping we'd get kind of the reverse of that situation from the first episode. Let me talk to you. <laughs> Just let us go, man. Yeah, well... That wasn't me! Different person. Yeah, all these people are just like, uh, should we do something? Oh, come on, Steven. Damn it. Where are we going now? Oh, what the hell? Well, that wasn't Steven that did that. I swear it wasn't me. Then who was it? A third personality, maybe? That would be pretty cool. Take him to the ledge. He'll talk. Kanji, that's fucked up. Also, probably won't get him to talk. <laughs> like, I don't know. Praise on me. Ah, god damn it. Oh. I know I've been saying it a lot on this show, but. I thought it talked. Fuck you, Kanji. Shut up. Yeah, I've been saying it a lot, but. Again, that's not bloody and gory, but that's really dark. <laughs> I suggest you start listening to that stupid pigeon. I mean, did Kanchu take over the body for a little bit, or was that another personality? And they'll imprison me in stone. How oh, does it sound so bad to me? Yeah, for real. What are you doing? Oh. You're getting desperate, old bird. Keep digging! You're sounding a little desperate yourself. That's pretty cool. They banished me. All cases. I wonder why. Oh, I'll be there. Why do you have to be like that? I. I can't stand characters that are like that. Oh, whoa, that looked really weird. And I do not say that in a in a complimentary kind of way. We're inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. <laughs> Goddess of music and love. Cool. Oh. Attendance. He sees. Oh, come on, that's lame though. I wanted to see the gods. Thanks for the heads up on that, Kanchu. For not abandoning humanity unlike the rest of you. Well, that doesn't seem fun. The avatars that remain here are simply meant to observe. Well, that's boring. Fuck that. Did not wish to meddle in the affairs of man. And we all saw how well that worked for the Eternals movie, so let's not do that. that he definitely mouthed fuck right there. <laughs> I know he technically didn't say it, but... Do you not seek to release Amit from her tomb? I was <laughs> Oscar Isaac is killing it right here. His servant unwell. You, I mean, you not technically you? wrong, but you're still evil. <laughs> so. The man is clearly insane. <laughs> we will not tolerate violence. Kind of don't tolerate anything, including the truth, so whatever. Are you unwell? Well, yes, but I feel like that's um, a poor term to use. <laughs> um, this is about how dangerous he is, if you would just listen for a second. He has committed no offense. You, you won't let me say what the offense is. This matter is concluded. What? We didn't even... 
Didn't even get a chance to talk about it. Okay, they either are in on it with him, or they are just heinously stupid. Like, they literally didn't even let Mark say something. He said, yes, I'm unwell, I need help. But he's a bad dude. Let me explain why. And they're like, no, he hasn't done anything wrong. Goodbye. Like, you don't get to look like you feel bad about it if you're not going to do anything about it. Mark. No? Find Senfu sarcophagus and you'll find your tomb. Okay, that must be okay. I'm like, if anything, you helping like this kind of makes me trust you a little less, but maybe she was actually just being nice. It's not the locals that I'm worried about. And the more helpful you are, the worse this kind of is for you, Layla. Although, Mark, you should really tell her that. What's the plan? Because it seems like she does not know. I get that you're not happy about me leaving so quickly and coming to Cairo. You did not just say that. But is, is that your apology? Just so you know, I'm not here to help you. I'm here for me and for everyone else who would die if Cairo succeeds. Fair enough. I am sorry. Are you? For whatever that's worth. I mean, you probably are, but still, you're being a fucking asshole. Anything real doesn't mean that we shouldn't have it. Maybe. A little too late for that now, though. <sighs> Mark. Oh, poor Layla. Let's get our story straight. Sure, whatever, dude. Like, that line in the first episode when um, Steven's boss was like, real catch you are, I'm like, that's what I constantly think. Yeah. Referring to Mark as Jesus Christ, dude. I can't really tell how authentic this music is to like Egyptian culture, but I like it. It's again, it's very different for a Marvel thing. Are they, are they playing a game? What is this? Joker just puts on all their mock games in his backyard. But I think I just would love to take a look. Oh shit! Yeah, I can hear Steven's voice coming out. Please. Just let Steven out before you blow this. Not a chance. I mean, All right, what do you say? what's the worst you can do right now? Come on. It's coded. Come on, let Steven out. What now? What now? What now is you give me the body and you piss off. <laughs> no, you gotta tell me. Yeah, come on, Steven. I think Mark should just give over control, but if he's gonna be a dick about it, then just help him out. We don't really have time for this. Now, if you match those stars up with the other piece over there. And... Hey, what are you doing? You really think I'm an idiot? Anton, stop! To be fair, I did think you were an idiot, so sorry about that. You can have the treasure. Anton, you ain't giving him anything, Arthur. Trying to stop us from reaching. Please prevent the wounds from your father's murder from reopening. Since when is he able to do that? I offer proof that it's just know everything about your life. Would you like to see for yourself? I mean, I'm not really sure why you're fighting it right now, Mark. Seems like I do. Be a good time to gear up. What what are his powers actually? I'm now I'm confused. Like before he used the cane to summon a portal, now he Scarlet Witch like blew up <laughs> the crypt. Oh cool. Alright, I'm game for an action scene, let's go. Cool. I'm actually really enjoying this music as well. No, Mark. No, wait, no, this is kind of a bad time, Steven. I'm sorry. Oh, so he always has that suit on? Oh, Steven, that's fucked up. He's like, alright, you can have it back. <laughs> no, that was a nice setup right there. Ooh. Damn. Oh. <laughs> okay, hell yeah. Layla is like very quickly becoming like a favorite character of mine. Okay. Damn. <laughs> gotcha. He said I had a right to know. I have no idea. Sure you don't. It's like I've not known you at all. Yeah. You haven't. Wow. You don't. Fuck you, Mark. That would have been a great time to try and defend yourself rather than just confirm her worst fear fucking dick i would kick him out of that car right then and there i'd be like you can walk to where we are going don't have time for your shit fragments you know who could help 
He won't return the body. Shut up, can't you? Let go. I don't have time. All right. Go ahead. You're in. Hell yeah. Great acting what? moment, and it's good to see you, Steven. Yeah. Egyptians invented. And st it is a little weird how. Um, There's not a lot of landmarks in the desert. Chummy, the two of them are. Damn, did that really fast. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. Oh, look at that. So it was pointless getting this? I remember that night. Oh? I remember every night. You gonna prove yourself useful aside from granting superpowers, can't you? That would be really nice. I mean, true, let's do it. If you have to be imprisoned in stone, um, we'll bust you out of there at some Stay point. Tell Mark to free me. Okie doke. Wait, does that mean he's gonna not have Moon Knight powers for a little while? Whoa, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty sick. I was just gonna say, like, would that not be beyond terrifying to see if you had no idea what was going on? But if you did know what was going on, that is so cool. I really like the vibe of this scene. There's just a lot of energy here. This is good. Again, these other gods have to be working in secret to free Ahmed, or they're just so stupid. 29 degrees north, 25 east. Sick. All right, sorry, Kanchu. We'll get you out of there at some point. Shit. Mark. Well, that to me says he's definitely not going to have his Moon Knight powers until he's able to free Kanchu. Why are you granting Arthur this private audience? Why wouldn't you be like, hey, Mark, Steven, he fucked with you. We'll let you have this private audience. Like, the fuck, dude? I enjoyed dealing out pain on your behalf. Wow, big surprise. I owe my victory to you. Well, you're probably right. Oh, what? Really? I got a lot to say about this one. Um, there were, again, parts where I was like, that was incredible, loved it, but there were some parts in here I was like, ugh, didn't, did not like that at all. Yeah, like I said, there were there were things here that I thought were really, really good and things that I, I really didn't like. Let's just kind of go chronologically here because there were quite a few scenes where I was like, loved that, hated that. <laughs> so, it'd be easier to do that rather than say, these are the things I hate, then these are the things I love, you know? Opening scene, uh, I have no real complaints there. I think it was a great way to get to know Layla a little bit better, made her more likable, in my opinion. Mark's whole scene with the, um, like random assailants that was another one where i'm like there are parts of it i really liked the sound design was phenomenal during that scene um i was really getting into it when they were doing their little dance thing and you know the the really bassy kind of notes started coming through not even bassy like the really synthesized notes started coming through like it was just it was good shit i really like that the actual fight choreography, I actually did enjoy because it was rather simplistic for like such a big Marvel thing. There were some bits of comedy throughout it that I genuinely enjoyed. I am a little concerned though about, I don't know, I guess the portrayal of Egyptian people in this. Because obviously these are just three characters and we do see other Egyptians throughout the episode who are just, you know, living normal whatever lives. But I don't know, these guys were so cartoony that I was like, hmm. This feels a little dated for some reason. But I think those issues are mostly resolved with the fact that they did the clever edit where, you know, he loses control, Steven takes over for a bit. But then, especially on the second one, where a mysterious third personality seems to take over. Again, it could be Kanchu directly took control, but I get the feeling he can't. At least not in a way that would allow him to do this because we see him take control of Mark's body a little bit later in the episode and it's like a really strenuous effort that Mark for the most part is able to kind of push out so yeah this seems like there is a third personality and I don't know Moon Knight comics well enough to know if there is a third personality that I should be you know keeping an eye out for my brother did tell me uh, there were like five personalities but I don't know like who they are or what's going on but it seems like 
whoever this personality is, they are a bloodthirsty one. But yeah, overall I enjoyed that scene, the way that all progressed, uh, showing the third personality or whatever was going on there. Leading up to Kanshu creating the Eclipse, which in the long run I'm like, eh, I mean it was not exactly pointless because it does set up, you know, all the other gods, uh, the, the Ennead. But the actual meeting and the, you know, trial, that was another scene where I'm like, there are parts of this that I love and parts that I really don't like. I think the acting in general was really, really good from literally everybody in that room. But I think it's so damn lame that they went the cheap route and they're like all right here's a, an opportunity to see you know all of the main egyptian gods but it's just their avatars being possessed by them and i'm like oh come on man and there is that other god who uh, i'm sorry I'm, i don't remember the name and i'm not i can't be bothered to look it up but she offered some help was like hey maybe you can um find out where amit's tomb is if you go here and find this but again, it seems too good-natured. I'm like, that makes me trust you a little less, actually. Who knows? We'll see what's going on there. It seems implied that Kanchu and her god were, you know, intimately involved, so I guess that's playing into it. And I was very happy with Layla's reintroduction in this episode, because she, to me, was like the the star of this one. She was by far my favorite character in this episode. And the many conversations that she has with Mark, um, while being actually pretty interesting and complex, really reaffirms that I do not like Mark. He's he's really fucked up to her, actually. I enjoyed a lot of the stuff with uh, Anton, but also didn't enjoy a good amount there. But I loved all the stuff with Mark and Steven, how they're kind of battling for control. You even hear Steven's accent, you know, slip out when um, Mark is talking to Anton, which I thought was really good. And there were parts of the action like choreography that I thought were super good. And a couple parts that I thought looked kind of weird. I think more that looked good. Like I really enjoyed seeing, um, you know, Moon Knight use the, the cape like a crescent moon to kind of Batman his way down. I actually really enjoyed Layla's fight scene just cause it felt very real and gritty. Like she took a lot of punches before she was finally able to take him down. There was this really awkward moment though where someone grabbed, um, Mark's cloak and it's clear that it's a CGI cloak because the guy grabbing it like doesn't do anything He literally just holds it there while Mark struggles and the other guy's not doing anything He's literally just holding it <laughs> kind of just waiting for you know either Oscar Isaac or the stunt actor to do their thing and I don't know that just felt really awkward <laughs> I love the scene right after that though, um, of the two of them driving to Ahmed's tomb. And she's like, every time I think I know the whole story, there's something else and I just don't know you. And he's like, yeah, you don't, you never did. And I think it's really telling of where each of the characters are now, who they are as people. And even though it's clear that, you know, it hurts Mark to treat her that way, I'm sure he really doesn't want to. It takes a, a special kind of coldness to tell the person that you've married and loved so much that, yeah, you never knew me. You never did. And not really seeming to feel, I don't know, as bad as he should feel over that. And then the whole final sequence of the episode, uh, I think was very good. It really worked for me. I enjoyed seeing uh, Steven really get to show his prowess. It's definitely what I predicted in the first episode. I'm like, Mark is, you know, the muscle. He's able to do all the fighting, but when they really need someone who's intellectual and can save the day that way, they're gonna need Steven. So I like that. That's a cool way to play the character. And him, you know, turning into Mr. Knight in order to, like, change the night sky. Even though the visual effects were a little hit or miss during certain parts of that scene, overall it was super effective, very cool. I was really into the whole scene, and that it had some severe lasting consequences I think is really good. And even though I think the ending is rather abrupt, it didn't really feel like a great ending spot for the episode, I did enjoy uh, seeing Arthur have that moment with Kanchu being like, you're you're the one who made me this way, man. You got no one to blame but yourself. Like, I think it really explains the kind of person that Arthur is, um, which in my opinion is a person full of bullshit. <laughs> 
Because he keeps saying, like, you taught me how to heal, you taught me this, you taught me that. Amit's um, plan is, you know, so glorious and wonderful. But I think he pretty clearly shows, like, I'm doing this for revenge. I enjoyed the pain that I doled out with you. And clearly Amit has taken advantage of, you know, him as a broken person, thanks to Kanchu. And now he wants revenge. Like, that is what he wants. He wants revenge. But yeah, I do really think the episode should have ended with uh, Steven passing out and just have that be the ending. Push it forward just that little bit more with Arthur having that scene. Eh, it just felt out of place. That felt like it would have been a better opening scene for the next one as opposed to the ending scene for this one. But let's move into the technicals. Writing in this episode... Character motivations? For pretty much everyone, they seem to be very on point. However, I'm still running into an issue with the other Egyptian gods. Because again, they are either hilariously stupid and hypocritical, or they themselves are working with Arthur to release Ahmed. If that's the case, that's pretty cool. That could be an interesting storyline. But I'm really worried that they're just stupid. <laughs> and if that's the case, I'm like... You can't have them be stupid and not know anything that's going on on Earth if their whole argument for not being around is we observe, we step back and we watch everything that happens. It's like you're clearly not watching anything if this guy who has like cult members around the world and, and you haven't seen or heard anything about this, like I call supreme bullshit. So yeah, again, that's either kind of bad writing or they're in on it. And unfortunately, uh, for this episode, I have to make the assumption that it's just bad writing because I don't know if they're in on it. Like, I haven't got to that point yet. If later down the line that is revealed, then, you know, retroactively, this episode, I think, will look a lot better. But at the time, uh, they just look real stupid. In terms of plot progression, there's tons. I mean, after ending the last episode, you know, with getting to Egypt, they really continued trucking along like Layla got herself a passport got herself over there they're all mixed up in this adventure they found a different sarcophagus to get a you know a clue to find the actual tomb turn the night sky in order to actually find it like there's definitely lots happening and Kanchu being imprisoned in stone is kind of huge and in terms of pacing um it was a little spotty in this one Honestly, I think the pacing of this entire show so far has been a little spotty. I thought the opening scenes really had a good flow. Uh, seeing Layla get the passport, Mark having this big action sequence. Like, it was really flowing right along. But as soon as Kanchu made the eclipse, and then they have this big, long dialogue scene where you don't even get to see the gods to make it more interesting, it, it really started to drag for me. I was like, okay, this is... This is like lasting a good long while. And then from there you get even more dialogue scenes with Layla and Mark, which I found those to be more interesting, uh, more engaging personally. But then there's even more. And again, it's just a very long, long section of like exposition and dialogue and kind of catching characters up before you get to something a little more exciting and they get to the sarcophagus, have the whole scene with Steven and then leads into, you know, an action sequence. But then from there, uh, the pacing didn't really fall for me. It seemed like once we got to that point, the pacing had kind of corrected itself. Because after that, you get a breather with Layla and Mark, which was a really good scene. And then you get the really good stuff at the end with Steven proving his worth and then changing the night sky. I do think the final scene with Arthur is kind of a, a pacing issue as well. But it's, it's very short, so it's not like... An egregious error or anything so yeah in terms of writing i'm gonna go for a 7 out of 10 because there's stuff in here that i think is being done well but there is some stuff that i'm like maybe it's being done well but i just don't know yet uh as of now it doesn't seem like it editing in this episode as i said i was going to talk about uh there's an edit in here that really upsets me <laughs> that a professional level project could have this in it but there's a cut when Mark is walking through the uh, portal to the Ennead. And it seems to me like it's a moment where they wanted it to sort of fade to black and then fade back in as he is in the new location. But really it just fades to black and then hard cuts to him there with the shadows 
still being pretty prominent, but again, it's not like a fade up from black and it is just so jarring and just looks terrible. I'll bet it's a situation where they fix it in post, where they're like, oh shit, we totally missed that, let's fix that, and then, you know, repost it to Disney+. Plus. But, I mean, I managed to catch it on, you know, opening night, so <laughs> I think it looked really bad. But then there's also this really cool edit later, where um, it's a cut on action with Layla and Moon Knight, where each of them does like a cool motion to kind of precede their fight scene. And they do a great job with the edits, uh, during Mark's blackouts when another personality takes over, so... Ah, it's so frustrating. I'm like, that one error was oh, like a really bad error, in my opinion. But there's some other stuff in this one that is really, really good. I'm gonna bump it up to an 8 out of 10, but only because I think the final sequence of, um, you know, changing the night sky, I think the way they edited all that together was very well done. Great, you know, cross-cutting, I loved it. So yeah, 8 out of 10. Cinematography, um, there was some stuff in here that I think was very good, and also some stuff that wasn't. <laughs> it's kind of the theme of this episode. There was a lot of handheld camera use during the fight scenes um, towards the beginning of the episode, and a good amount towards the later half as well. And there were some parts of that fight scene where I was like, ooh, I love this kind of Dutch angle that we have going on here. I love the um, shakiness of this particular moment. But then there are some parts where the shaky cam is just Jason Bourne shaky cam, and I'm like, all right, I can't see what's happening. You're giving me a headache. Personally, a little disappointed in the cinematography for the the Ennead scene, because again, that's a moment where I'm like, if you're not going to show me the gods, then you need to make this feel like incredibly grand and huge. And the cinematography sort of did, but not enough for it to really be sold, in my opinion, that this is, you know, the great pyramid of Giza that is home to the currently living Egyptian gods and all that. The cinematography just never really accentuated that, in my opinion, and I think that's a shame. Weirdly enough, I think the best cinematography was actually in that uh, changing the night sky scene. Obviously, it was tons and tons of green screen and visual effects. But just like the motions of the camera, how it would kind of sweep through the scene, then I felt like the grandness of it all, the, you know, I felt the stakes, the, the energy of the scene. Whereas in the Ennead scene earlier, I really didn't. And I'm gonna go for seven out of 10. Sound design, uh, that was phenomenal in this episode. Again, the the score during like the big fight scene at the start with Mark, I thought was really, really good. Ooh. Swelling like choral score and everything uh, during the changing the night sky scene, that was fantastic. Even the more marvelly like trumpets and brass kind of sound during the fight scene um, with Moon Knight and Layla, like it was just so good. I don't even know how to describe why I liked it so much. It was just exciting. And I don't know, there's a lot of like fight scene music where, you know, it, it works for what you're for what you're watching, but it's not it's not exciting, it doesn't like pull you in, it doesn't make you think about it for a second. But here there were several moments where I was like, I love that, that sounds great, <laughs> this is really fun. So yeah, I'm going for 10 out of 10 for the sound design. Acting in the episode was another very strong point for this one. I don't know if I'm mispronouncing her name, but uh, May, May Kalamawi? Is that how you say it, Kalamawi? Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think for me, she was the strongest in this whole episode, even though Ethan Hawke and Oscar Isaac were really gunning for the award in this one as well. But her performance had some really great subtleties, some really great, for lack of a better term, just likableness. I have to admit, in the last episode with her introduction, I was like, I'm not quite sure I see how she fits into the MCU, or if she's really someone I expect to stick around. And this episode, um, she completely changed my mind. I was like, you know what? You're awesome. <laughs> I would gladly see you pop up in any MCU movie. And the genuine pain on her face when Mark tells her, you know, you you don't know me, you never have. She did such a great job during that scene. But again, Oscar Isaac, um, 
like voicing Conchu was so good. And I love the part when um, he's looking in the mirror and you just visually see on his face him change from Mark to Steven. Like it was fantastic. And Ethan Hawke is just so great. <laughs> Again, there's a lot of layers to his villainy, but he really plays a great villain. I love it. 10 out of 10. Costumes and makeup. Uh, this is another one where I'm like, in some ways it was really good, in some ways it just was not. Again, I don't know how accurate the uh, the three dudes that he's like, well, I guess ends up killing um, at the start of the episode. Like, I don't know if that's something you genuinely would see like an Egyptian person wearing. But regardless, I think it looked terrible. <laughs> I think it did not look good at all. There was something that, that was so like, pirate-y about it and it just made it feel really hokey and weird and I, I did not like the costumes for those characters at all. But on the flip side, the costumes for Mark throughout the episode I think are great. Like not only just civilian wear stuff, but the Moon Knight costume looks fantastic, the Mr. Knight costume looks fantastic, and I love like the all white like hoodie and long coat that he has on at the end like that's that's some shit i would just wear because it looks really good i think layla looked great during the episode again it was all very like functional but uh sleek attire which i think really suits her personality and character and i love that the necklace that she had on the whole episode turned out to be like detachable and she used it as like two daggers that was fucking sick actually stylish and functional but then in another way i just did not like the costumes of the avatars for um the gods like there were a couple of them where i'm like oh i feel a little personality here a little little something something like, maybe this is more or less what the god would look like if they adapted into modern society type thing. But our main god, what, who is the main god? Osiris? Horus, who appears to be like, you know, the head honcho, the Zeus, if you will. He looks so boring. He was in just a plain black suit. Again, I guess it's like, oh, he has authority. So, you know, he's like, his avatar is like the businessman or whatever. It's so boring, dude. It's not even a cool looking suit. It is literally just a, a black suit it is so boring <laughs> so yeah another category like some things didn't like others so i'm gonna go for a seven out of ten set design um again there were some things that i liked and some that i didn't it's hard for me to say if the egyptian sets are good because again i'm like i don't know how authentic any of this is or isn't but i can say it looks very good like, it looks well made, it looks convincing to a foreigner like me. And I know they didn't film in Egypt, so I think they did a good job in that regard. But then, again, the Ennead scene, like the big chamber of the Great Pyramid of Giza, it just didn't really feel grand enough to me. The cinematography didn't really elevate it to that level, and I don't think the set design itself was really enough to elevate it to that level either childish as this might sound it looked kind of small <laughs> again i'm sure the set they were on was massive but it's the great pyramid of giza <laughs> i again i don't even know if it's actually as big as i'm imagining in my head but i kind of imagine something huge just massive massive and it, it's not really what we got it is an impressive set though i will say uh what they built in the set in the space looks very very good i just don't think it's enough and this is a personal preference kind of thing um i'm sure other people would disagree with this but the whole location of the stuff with anton um and the sarcophagus i i didn't like it i don't know just the whole horse corral just being a big empty lot of dirt with some you know pretty lights around it and the little pyramid things like i don't know i just I wasn't feeling it. It wasn't a situation where I'm like, oh, they did such a bad job choosing this location or building this set. I just didn't really like it. So yeah, I wasn't um, as impressed by the set design as I would have liked to be, but I wasn't as disappointed by it as I was with some of the other categories, so I'll do an 8 out of 10. And finally, the visual effects. And unfortunately, I feel like we've gone back to episode 1, because there's some visual effects that are quite good, and some that um, I think go beyond not being great and straight up are kind of bad. 
Like consistently on this show, uh, I noticed green screen issues. And to me, that tells me that this show is just rushed. But there was a considerable amount of green screen in this episode and a considerable amount of moments where I'm like, that's a green screen. <laughs> and again, I feel like some people are gonna be like, oh, well, that's every Marvel movie. They're all like tons and tons of green screen. But I feel like I don't notice it as much as I am noticing it here. Kanchu, for the most part, throughout the episode looked very good. There were a couple parts, specifically when he was in very direct sunlight, that I was like, eh, that doesn't look great. But overall, it was pretty convincing, pretty good. The shot of Mark standing on the cliff looking down at the body of the kid who just killed himself, I thought that looked very bad, honestly. That was definitely a moment where I'm like, I feel like I can see three different shots all stitched together and all the visual effects are glaring right at me. Like, that was just, that was not good. And there were also several moments during the fight scene towards the end, um, you know, parts that looked good, and there were a lot of parts where I'm like, oh, that looks weird so yeah unfortunately again for a disney project with their amount of money and resources i'm like you should have taken the extra time to make sure you got this like 100 percent ready to go and because he didn't i'm gonna go for a three out of ten because there were a lot of visual effects in this episode that actually pulled me out of the moment and i really don't like when that happens and that makes this episode the lowest scoring one of the season so far with a 7.5 out of 10. And I personally think that's actually kind of perfect. Because <laughs> to me, that score really showcases that this episode has some really great things going for it, but it has a couple like very amateur or weirdly done kind of things that just kind of stop it from being really good. This may have been the weakest of the three, but it was still pretty good. And in terms of story, at least, uh, I'm still very much enjoying uh, the path that it's taking. So I will see you all in the next one. And that's about it.